All right, media, thank you for joining our end of season media session with general manager and head coach Derek Fisher. And thanks again for all your coverage last week of our 11 players exit interviews. Um, please use the raise hand function in the chat and we'll call on you that way. Uh, we'll start with Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum Sportsnet. Hey, coach, good morning. Good morning, Rashawn. Um, when you look back on this season, um, what were the areas of growth for yourself um, as you handled both roles and, and maybe, you know, some of the challenges um, that you foresaw and then, you know, maybe some that, that you didn't you didn't see either? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like overall, um, you know, in in you know, our, my first year and our first year as an organization, like, you know, being in, in, in this situation, um, you know, things relatively went well from that perspective. I, I thought that um, myself and our staff and, and, and just as a collective, like, tried to keep the right balance um, in how we thought about uh, making decisions in terms of our roster, you know, putting the team together, um, balancing, you know, as a coach, what you may want for now, because, it, you know, as a coach, you're always thinking about winning today. Um, but, you know, uh, from a from a management perspective, you you have to balance uh, today and tomorrow and next week and, you know, and next month and beyond. And I thought overall, we, you know, some of the decisions we made, you know, it, it was with all of those components in mind. So, you know, if there's anything that that I would take away from this year, I think it would just be to continue to, regardless of role or title, you know, really continue to, you know, build quality relationships with our players, you know, our staff uh, and as an organization, um, you know, as a whole, you know, we, we also were going through transition from a business perspective with, um, you know, our president and COO, you know, previously when Danita Johnson departing and, um, so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, growth and work to do just, you know, as an organization that we're excited about and, and we're looking forward to this off season. Um, yeah, outside of that, to be honest with Sean, I, I think our, our players just deserve uh, the credit for, um, you know, going through the change and the evolution with us. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've always tried to have you know, an, an open door policy in terms of communication and making sure that people know and, and trust that we're all striving to get better, that they can bring uh, concerns, feedback, thoughts to the table, uh, and that we're going to try to address them and, and move forward um, together. So uh, I thought for the most part, we accomplished the, you know, the foundation of, of that standard uh, this season. And we're hoping to build on it going forward. How exciting is it for you along those lines um, that the the found what you're building, um, your vision uh, that it's seen right and, and understood by um, you know the members of that team. Like they all spoke about it last week in terms of you know how they're in lockstep. They 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 sort of see your vision. They sort of see. Um, some of them, you know, talked about the long game, so to speak. Um, they, they see that. They, they understand that. How, how exciting is that for you as you head into this offseason and, and get ready for next year? Um, no, it's, a, it's exciting and, and humbling at the same time. Um, we're, we're very hungry and, and motivated to keep pushing ourselves to get better. Um, that's, that's what this whole process is about. Um, you know, we knew going into – a transition into, you know, a new era, a new way of, of doing business on and off the court, uh, that it was going to be hard, uh, that there would be challenges and adversities. Um, and I think as a group, you know, we didn't anticipate the level of injuries and, and adversity that we'd face on the court. Uh, but I think our players still came to work every day with the expectation that they had to buy into what we were doing to continue to work hard, uh, to continue to play for one another. Uh, and they, they got that accomplished. 
you know, uh, and they deserve a lot of credit. So we're, we're for sure, um, you know, we don't, like we're not happy necessarily that we aren't still playing basketball, but we are excited and motivated uh, for what is to come, what we're creating and what we're working on and building together. And, um, you know, we, we're striving to create an organization that, you know, isn't just measured by wins and losses and playoff appearances. Like this is bigger than that. Uh, and hopefully that's what our players are also speaking to when they say the long game, like it's, it's how we impact the community here in Los Angeles. It's how young girls of color and, and, and women see our players, um, you know, being dynamic and being great and being leaders in the community and fighting for social justice and police reform and um, women's rights. And there, there's more to it than just how many games you won this year. Uh, we're going to get that part accomplished. Uh, that's what this organization always has done. And we're going to be successful in the court. But we also want to make a difference here in L.A. Uh, it's a crowded landscape. A lot of great professional sports teams here. Um, obviously, you know, Angel City's coming online soon. You know, we're, we're happy for them that there's another professional women's team uh, coming to town. But we have a lot of work to do to make sure people know who we are and not just because we win, uh, because we make a difference and because it's it's another way to show girls and women that that they matter. Um, and that's the number one priority that we always have to have regardless of, of basketball wins and losses. Thanks for Sean. We'll go to Tukni Nguyen with the LA Times. Hey Derek, good to see you. Happy to see you dressed up for your exit interview. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. It's, it's been, you know, a couple of years of polos and sweatshirts. So I figured that, uh, you know, I, I put on a shirt today for the first time in a long time. <laughs> it's good that it still fits. Not a yes. lot of people can say that after. after <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you come into the season and you rebuild this roster for the new era of the Sparks. And you had this vision of what you wanted the team to be this year. And unfortunately, because of all the injuries that didn't quite play out on the court. So just how frustrating or disappointing was that to not even get to test this vision on the court because of some of those unexpected adversities that came up? Yeah, I mean, there were definitely moments, um, you know, where you, you feel that way, right? You feel like, you know, this, this can't be happening. Like, you, you know, we, um, you know, when we, we set out to, to create a roster with increased versatility, athleticism, you know, at the wing positions, uh, you know, multiple ball handlers, decision makers, playmakers, um, you know, being able to move pieces around the court offensively so that we could be more dynamic, you know, so that we could get to the free throw line, uh, you know, become a, a better three point shooter, getting more threes uh, on the basket, being able to get downhill and get to the rim. And, uh, you know, we feel like we had that roster on paper uh, put together. Uh, as you stated, didn't didn't come together that way on the court, uh, you know, due to some things that you just can't control in sports. You know, injuries are a part of it. Um, but but also when you know, when you miss the, the, the significant players that we missed in terms of the amount of games, um, it, it just made it a really tough and uphill battle the whole way. Um, but I think when we look back on it, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see that it forced us to grow maybe more than we would have, you know, had we been healthy. Um, I think part of this transition for us is separating and disconnecting uh, ourselves from being so reliant on who the player is, right? The name on the back of her jersey um, and, and relying on that to get it done for us, as opposed to building habits, uh, creating a way to play a way to practice how we approach our business and our and our work every day that no matter who it is no matter who we draft sign trade for bring in that there's a standard that you just automatically know when you play for the Los Angeles Sparks uh, if you if you're not interested in getting there don't go don't come um, that's that's what we're, we're trying to build and I think this year despite not being in postseason play, this group, we were able to establish a lot of those standards and expectations for how things need to be done here. We have a long way to go, um, but, you know, we're not going to base it on, you know, whether or not this player's here or that player's here. Like, 
there's there's just going to be a standard of, of excellence that you know that we demand that we create here um and you know we're confident that the results on the court will be there when, when we're able to have you know a, a relatively healthy team and roster that's just in sports there's no way around it you know the healthy teams are the ones that are most successful and you know that's something that we also have to make sure we figure out this offseason is uh, how to make sure our players can come back in um, a, as healthy as possible physically and mentally to, to be prepared for the intensity that comes with a, a, a really, you know, pressure packed, um, you know, 34, 36 games, however many games you have to play. Ultimately, you know, we have to physically and mentally be ready to go. And if you could put your GM hat on briefly, uh, when you're looking forward to free agency, what are some of the priorities that you're looking at? this this round yeah i mean you know we're we're always going to look for opportunities to improve our team and our roster like you know that's um you know you win the championship and you still have that responsibility so that that'll never change um you know i think for us it, it kind of is connected to the question you just asked right where it's it's going to be difficult to truly evaluate okay were we really not as good in this area or were we as good in this area as we think we are just due to the, the personnel being um, being out and so many games missed with key players. So when you look at our rebounding, for example, you know, when you think about Shanae and Neka and Maria Vadiva and Jasmine Walker, uh, who a lot of people still, you know, just don't quite understand how talented of a player she is, but also like her, her rebounding in college was, uh, you know, that was something that we, we zeroed in on in, in the draft last year. Uh, so when you look at those four players from a rebounding perspective, okay, do we need to go into free agency to improve our rebounding? Or if those four players are healthy and all playing and available, can we, can we be a better rebounding team? Um, and so with that being said, like in, in free agency, uh, definitely, you know, that's going to be a focal point. How do we secure um, you know, more possessions with, with rebounds, um, even though we, we, we still have a great defense. Our defense has been in the top three the, these past three seasons, and we don't see that changing. Uh, but, but we feel like we can be the best in the league if we can clean up more possessions with rebounds. Um, and then also your perimeter shooting always has to be uh, really high to win in, in, in basketball these days. Like you, you can't be a subpar shooting team be inefficient offensively and, and still find success. So, um, but, you know, is, is that something that can just be cured in free agency? You know, it, it depends, but um, just as much as free agency is a priority in the off season, uh, developing our players and helping them get better is also equally a priority. Uh, so that, that's gonna be a focal point along with, again, always trying to evaluate um, you know, the roster make decisions on, you know, what players, what your needs are. Um, it, it could be a very interesting uh, free agency process in terms of, you know, players being on the move potentially, but, um, you know, we're, we're definitely going to focus on the core group of players that we have coming back at this point, making sure they're getting better and they're healthy and places where we can improve. Um, we're, we're, we're definitely going to take a look at it. Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Good morning, uh, Derek. How are you? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Doing well. Let me just first off by saying it was a pleasure covering you again for the second straight year, even if it was virtual like this. No, I appreciate it, Chris. I appreciate you and and, and everybody uh, you know really riding with us this year. It was it was uh, an interesting year. With you know, felt like we were going to be able to do more things in person this year and. Right. Um, you know, we weren't able to, but we appreciate the support. Appreciate you guys always tapping in and checking in with us and uh, looking forward to hopefully being able to do more of it in, in person in 22. Absolutely. That's that's the plan. Um, yeah, talking about the challenges uh, this, this year, were there any unexpected challenges that came from having that dual role? And was there anybody that you reached out to to kind of maybe help navigate through what, what was a difficult season and, and, and the se season of transition? Um, no, I think not necessarily unexpected um, challenges, uh, but just, 
you know, being a human being, like it's always difficult to have those conversations around whether a player is being traded uh, or, you know, you're releasing a player and, and letting her know that, you know, you're going to go in a different direction or, uh, you know, make a move that for her, of course, doesn't feel like it's the right thing. Um, so, you know, having that responsibility, uh, it isn't easy. Um, and so that's not unexpected, but it's, it's a reality of, of, of having that additional hat on. It's, it's your responsibility to, to, to be a leader in that regard. So uh, that was a, a, a bit of a transition, uh, you know, that not really proved to be challenging because it was unexpected, but, you know, there, there is a human aspect to this, this job that you can't forget. Uh, and so that's going to always be an area that I want to strive to to grow in and and make sure that regardless of what the news is, what the information or message is, that um, a player, you know, her family, um, her agent, you know, they feel like we're we're always respectful and and have a level of compassion about how difficult it is to be in this business and do this job. Uh, and that even if we're making a decision that doesn't feel right to them at that time, um, they can recognize that we're human as well. And we may not always get it right, but that's what we need to do at the time. Um, I mean, I, I, I read and study and, and communicate with a number of different, you know, current coaches, former coaches, you know, leaders, um, you know, without sharing names, because that, you know, it's not necessary to do it out of respect for them. Um, but always looking for ways to get better and, and improve. And, you know, in, in the W, you know, you do have a handful of folks that, that share the, the dual role by title. Um, but there's no question that, uh, you know, the teams that are, you know, successful, it's, it's a team. It's, it's a collective group uh, that's getting it done in the right ways. And so, you know, even if there's a, there's a person that, you know, by title is the coach or the GM or the assistant coach or, you know, director of community relations. Like it, it's still the entire group uh, that's making these things happen on and off the court. So, um, you know, I try to keep that in mind all the time that it, it's, um, you know, although I'm, you know, front facing oftentimes, um, I'm still a part of a community and a, and, a, and a group here with the Sparks that, you know, we're all in this together and, you know, we, we have a responsibility to, to, to build something successful um, together. And, and that's the way I'm going to try to continue to lead. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. We'll go to Sabrina Merchant with SB Nation. Hey, Derek, thanks for taking the time today. Um, so you guys signed a lot of players to two-year contracts this past offseason, and I'm curious if that was, you know, with a design to have some continuity heading into this next season. Like, do you feel like this group needs some time to build together, or are there things that you think can only be addressed externally? Yeah, no, I, it was it was definitely by design. I think, uh, you know, with us, you know, transitioning into you know a new a new era and a new phase of of Sparks basketball, like it was important to try and establish a, a core group of players, you know, starting with NECA that, you know, could go on this two year journey with us as we, as we charted this new course. And, you know, we felt like it, it, to ask more of players to go in this new direction with us uh, wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. So, you know, two years was, um, we felt like the right number to be able to say to players and their agents, we recognize that this is going to be new. This is different than maybe what people have seen before. Um, but go on this ride with us, go on this journey of, of change and evolution with us and give us a chance to show you over this first year, year and a half of, of what's possible and, and, and what we can be capable of. And, and, and we want to include you in that process. And, if, if things are going well and they're going in the direction that we all see it can go, you know, then we can have the appropriate conversations about, um, you know, stand together longer. Uh, and so, you know, by doing that, we, we, we do believe that, you know, that, that carryover from year one to year two with 
a core group that will have like, you know, been through the mud together a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, had some shared and common experiences as a team. That's what re the real foundation of, of success is built on in sports. Um, the, the years that you don't get it done together, those become the seeds in the soil to the years that you do. Uh, and so, you know, we feel like we have a core group of players under contract for next year that, you know, they have a, a shared experience from this past year that should lead to the conversations and the improvement uh, and the change that's necessary to be better next year than we were this year. And part of that is just being healthy, but, but also part of that is being better as a coach uh, in terms of preparation and better as as players in terms of preparation for a season and, and getting better uh, so that your game, you know, is able to help the team more. Uh, so, you know, definitely by design, but, you know, we also recognize uh, that we don't necessarily want to leave ourselves with another round of, you know, 10 players in free agency at the same time either. So there's still a lot for us to think about as we look forward to this season and, and what goes beyond 22. Uh, so we'll have to continue to have those discussions and make decisions on what we feel like are the right things to do to make sure we can start to build some of that continuity that you mentioned. Um, the best teams in sports have it, uh, and the W is not always easy to do, but we, we have to, we have to now, you know, figure it out under this new CBA, um, you know, how to build continuity so that. Um, you know, when you look around the league, you look at Connecticut, you look at what Washington's been able to establish the last few years, um, Seattle, you know, now Vegas, um, you know, even Chicago's core group of players, you know, three, four or five years together, uh, that makes a difference. And, and that's where we want to get to uh, as we build something new here. Thanks, Derek. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sabrina. We'll go to John W. Davis with Southern California News Group. Good morning, Coach Fisher. How you feeling? Doing good, John. How you doing? Thank you so much. So speaking of the CBA, I have two questions. Um, I asked the first one first. So as a GM, do you wish you could have lottery protected that 2022 pick, first round pick that you traded for Jasmine Walker? Was that even a possibility? Uh, no, I, I think there are, there are some limitations to the way those things work in terms of the WNBA CBA uh, and, and, you know, protecting picks or not being able to protect picks, but, you know, we, we don't regret uh, making the, the move to get Jasmine last year at number seven um, and, and looking at the draft class for 21 and 22. Um, we, we really feel strongly felt strongly in, in going into last year's draft that Jasmine would be as good or better than anybody we, we get in the draft this year or next year. And so the chance to land her in, in the 21 draft, uh, that was our protection, right? We didn't anticipate her going down with the injury. Um, we feel very strongly that, um, you know, although we, we, we respect Michaela Onyewede's year and the season that she had, um, but, you know, we feel Jasmine would have been very competitive, if not the best rookie in, in the league this year. Um, you, you know, we were only able to get a glimpse of, of her performance in the preseason, but um, you know we we feel good about the way we measured our decision with going after Jasmine right away um, and and not waiting for this year's draft in terms of where we would finish, uh, and then also you know putting ourselves in position with the tenth pick uh, because some of the conversations around the addition of Gabby Williams. Uh, you know, those things didn't just fall out of the sky. Um, you know, there had been ongoing possibilities um, around being able to, to work something out uh, to, to get Gabby. So being able to utilize that the number 10 pick um, after securing Jasmine with number seven, uh, you know, that allowed us to, to, to turn into to Gabby's addition. So, you know, we, we feel like without a first round draft pick necessarily this year, having Jasmine and then being able to add Gabby to our roster for next year. I don't think you can get better than that in, in the draft, uh, regardless of who comes out of school and, and they're going to be some really talented players that come out 
and 22. But but Jasmine and Gabby, we feel, will be uh, clearly better than anybody coming out of school. And with that said, my second question is, is more conceptual and just about the idea of giving yourself and players grace as everyone navigated you know, their second consecutive WNBA season during the pandemic. Is that something that you've thought about and you've talked to just about, you know, giving yourself grace and giving the players grace that like, you know, if we would have talked about this in 2019, nobody would have expected us to be in this position that we're in in 2021. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a, uh, um, a fair point uh, to make, I, I, you know, I, Sometimes as competitors, um, it's hard to give yourself the, the grace in the room, uh, you know, to, you know, have some reason why maybe you didn't achieve or accomplish what you feel like you're capable of. Um, but managing uh, the, the, the stressors and the variables that come with, you know, playing elite, you know, basketball at, at the highest levels. Uh, to, to, to try and figure that out, you know, in the midst of a global pandemic is, is not easy. Um, but, I, you know, while we for sure need to give ourselves room and, and have a level of compassion and space for each other, I think we recognize that our fans and uh, the folks that work in our arenas and in our buildings and, you know, people around the world have, you know, also been, uh, you know, navigating this pandemic uh, oftentimes in much more difficult circumstances, right? Like it, we're, we're grateful and thankful to be in a business that, you know, has continued to go um, and, 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 and be active during the pandemic. Many people have faced furloughs and layoffs and their jobs aren't returning. Uh, so we're, we're very lucky in that regard. And, and so while we try to give ourselves some room to, um, to be mindful of how difficult it's been for us, you know, I, I think we have to also keep in mind that, especially for people here in, in Southern California, you know, in LA County has been really hard hit by, by COVID-19, um, that people have had it much more difficult and harder than us. And, um, you know, we, we just want to always remain thankful and mindful of, of what other people are going through as well. Thank you, John. I see two more hands for today. We'll go to Michael Matthew with the Good News Network. Hey, what's up, Coach? How's everything going? Going well, Michael. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, you know, with you being a backcourt player for uh, your career, I just want to know your thoughts on uh, your backcourt play this year with like Erica and, and Taya. And then uh, what things are you looking um, going forward from those players as well. Like you saw the growth of Taya from the bubble into this season. What are you looking for for her to take that next step and her and Erica to continue to grow? Yeah, uh, great question. I, mean, I think, you know, first, like for, you know, Erica and, and, and Taya, like, you know, it's essentially like being two players that, you know, every night pretty much showed up and, and had their uniform on and were ready to go, regardless of how they performed. Um, you know, Coop had the one game suspension after the, uh, you know, stepping on the court in Minnesota. Uh, but other than that, you know, she played every night and tried her best to help her team win. Um, you know, Erica was 32 for 32. And that's not an easy thing to do for a professional athlete. Uh, you know, Neil Coffey also played in all 32 games. Brittany Sykes, I think, played in all 32 games. Uh, so, you know, they all deserve the credit for that. And, and then from there, as you drill down into their performance, uh, you know, I think Erica, um, you know, coming here, learning a, a new way of playing in terms of what we expected, you know, how to fit on a new roster. Um, it wasn't easy for, you know, for her, like, you know, you, you sign as a free agent and you're looking around and there's NECA and there's Shanae and there's Christy and and, uh, you know, Simone Augustus and all these people that were, you know, on our roster going into training camp. And then all of it, our roster looks very different, you know, uh, coming out of training camp. You know, we, we traded Sydney, you know, Nia Coffey's on the team, Bria Holmes on the team that, you know, Rella's on the team. Like that team looks a little different. Um, 
and then, you know, the injuries start to hit, you know, right away early on. So I think Erica and, and Ted did a tremendous job trying to figure out how to navigate and, and run a team that was constantly changing and evolving and, and didn't always have, um, you know, the, the ammunition, the firepower to do sometimes what you need done as, as a perimeter player, as a guard, you know, when you're trying to run and manage a team, it's important to know uh, and understand what you're working with, how to make sure people are in, in position to be successful. Um, so, you know, I, I think they both did a lot of good things and, and they're both areas for growth, you know, and, and part of that is, is, you know, myself and, and Erica, Taya, um, you know, and, and Christy as well, you know, as uh, you know, we were a different team with Christy on the court uh, this year. You know, we were essentially 500, a um, little, little over 500, just 10 to nine in 19 games that, that she played in. Um, and so we're a different team when Christy's on the court. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we just have to continue to, to put that work in, in in the off season to get better in terms of their individual games, but also continuing to, to build our relationship, our communication, make sure that I'm being clear on, uh, you know, what it is I'd, I'd like to see from them from the position, uh, but also continuing to empower them uh, to, to trust their instincts and, uh, you know, and rely on the work that they've put in. But it, it starts with putting the work in. And I think both players are excited to do that this offseason. Um, and, and they're both really motivated to be better for their team than they were this year. Um, and, and that's exciting. I, I think Taylor can make a big jump you know, from, from year, year two to year three, but, you know, to, to be frank, like, you know, the year in, in the bubble doesn't fully represent what it's like to be in the WNBA. And I think that Taya found more of that out this past season, when you're traveling from city to city, you're playing and visiting buildings. Um, you know, you're playing against different personnel with more players, you know, playing this season compared to in the bubble and with the players that opted out and weren't there. Uh, so, you know, I think she can, she's poised to make another big jump next season and, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do our part to make sure, uh, you know, our, our, our team is, is constructed to allow for all of our players to, to be significantly better, um, and, and still find the ways to, to play together, uh, as a team. Thanks. Uh, last hand, I see John has one more. Yeah, a point of clarification. Do you have the ability to protect a lottery pick? Do you have the ability to say it yes. again? I broke up a do little. Do you, as the GM, do you have the ability to protect a lottery pick like people do in the NBA? Do you have that ability as a WNBA GM? No, I'll, I will look and, and see. I, we, we've had some of these conversations with, uh, you know, with some teams, but um, I, I do not think currently that ability exists. Um, okay. You know, I, I guess I'm, um, you know, I'll, I'll make sure of that. I'll make sure that Eli confirms that with you, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that ability doesn't exist. Um, you're even limited in how far out you can go. I mean, teams in the NBA can go out three, four years or more sometimes um, in trading picks for, you know, 2025 20, first round picks or second round picks and, uh, you know, in the W at this point, you can only go ahead one year uh, until a certain date in the calendar where, where you can start to talk about the, 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 the year after that. Uh, so, you know, things that, you know, I think will continue to evolve, evolve over time. Uh, but, but right now that that opportunity doesn't exist. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for your coverage this season. Um, appreciate, appreciate it. And we'll send out a recording.